Welcome gamers to my review of Sword Art Online Fractured Daydream, a game that places you in the shoes of Kirito and other familiar faces from the SEO universe as they find themselves trapped in a new virtual world, Galaxia. And right off the bat, the game sets an intriguing premise. This isn't just another BRM MMORPG, but a fractured world where the characters relive their old memories, reattempt missions from the past, and unravel mysteries of their sudden entrapment. For longtime fans of the franchise, this idea of revisiting past missions as a layer of nostalgia, but it's also clever storytelling. As Galaxy is more than just a simple virtual world, it's a complex blend of memories, emotions, and consequences from the character's previous adventure. But while this game gives off familiar charm of earlier SAO entries, it also brings in characters from Sword Art Online Alternate Gun Gill Online, and this expands the scope of the narrative, connecting different threads of the SAO universe, and this diversity offers new perspectives and fresh storytelling opportunities. And speaking of storytelling, Fractured Stadiums begin strong, as it captures the chaos and urgency of being stuck in yet another virtual world, and there's a real sense of mystery as Kirito and the others navigate Galaxia. This game does a great job in the earlier hours, by building up the intrigue and giving other characters a romance to shine. A standout feature here is that some missions don't include Kirito at all, and allow you to explore other characters and their unique roles within the fragmented world. However, this is where the story falters. As you reach the later chapters, the game becomes victim of its own ambitions. The plot, which initially waved through the complex narrative threads, rushes towards the end with a pace that feels jarring, and the final missions are crammed with elevations, but the game doesn't slow down enough to fully unpack them, so characters that were building towards deeper emotional arcs are sidelined, and some of the more intriguing plot points are left unexplored. And all you're left with is the feeling that this game could have been truly great if it had taken the time to develop its final arc. But moving on to something the game does right is how it balances the cast. Kirito is of course a central figure, but this game doesn't rest entirely on his shoulders, and this is where this title excels compared to other past SAO entries, as it gives you the opportunity to engage with missions and storylines that don't solely revolve around Kirito, allowing other characters to step into the spotlight. This is especially noticeable in character-specific missions and side quests, where you can explore deeper relationships, motivations, and moments of personal growth. Whether it's Asuna, Sinon, or any other familiar face, these missions help to break up the monotony of following Kirito's journey and provide a more varied storytelling experience, and for me it's a welcome change that enhances the overall narrative, even if the final act doesn't give this arcs the closure they deserve. And when it comes to the gameplay, if you've played other SAO games, then you'll feel right at home with the combat mechanics. This game shines bright during its combat sequences, delivering fast-paced, fluid action that stays true to the series' roots. Whether you're slashing through hordes of enemies with Kirito's dual-wielding sword techniques, or taking out opponents from a distance with characters like Sinon, the combat feels responsive and exhilarating. But while the core combat is exciting, the post-story content leaves much to be desired, as once you've completed the 13-hour main storyline, this game shifts focus to a multiplayer grind that can feel repetitive and uninspiring. The end game is heavily relying on grind through missions and multiplayer content, all to unlock gear, abilities, and more powerful enemies. So for players who enjoy long grind and multiplayer aspects, this might be a fun challenge. But for those looking for a meaningful post-story content or a deeper narrative, this face can feel more like a chore than a reward. Ambitiously, the game maintains a vibrant, anime-inspired aesthetic the fans of the franchise will appreciate, but it doesn't push any graphical boundaries. And the environments in Galaxia, while imaginative in design, lack the level of detail or polish we've come to expect from modern RPGs. The character models are well done, with sharp animation during combat, but outside the battle, the world can feel somewhat static. And the game's audio is pretty good. The soundtrack complements the action sequence well, and the voice acting is solid across the board. Familiar voice actors return to reprise their roles, and helps to add authenticity and emotion to the character interactions. However, there are moments in the story that could have benefited from a more dynamical score to match the intensity of the narrative, particularly in the rush final act. In my opinion, Sword R Online Fractured Daydream is a good game. It's fun, nostalgic, and action-packed, and for me the game's a 7 out of 10. While I can't recommend this to everyone, it's a game I can easily recommend to SAO fans. If you've played the game, did you like it? Would you recommend it? Let me know in the comments. As always, thank you for watching till the end, don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe, and have a great day.